As we've said, while vaccine hesitancy is one reason we're not seeing equitable vaccination numbers, another major barrier for many has been the registration process itself, specifically the state's website, where tens of thousands of people log on all at once to vie for the same limited slots and end up dealing with site crashes and astronomical wait times, which fluctuate from more than a day to five minutes and back again in just a couple of seconds. Oh, and even if it is working, there are a bunch of different sign-up pages that all require you to manually put in different individual information, often waiting to tell you there are no appointments available after you've completed all the steps. And that's just the experience of people lucky enough to have hours of time at a computer to even try. Yet despite all the many, many complaints, the state has been slow and at times reluctant to change. So others have stepped in to fill the void, like Olivia Adams, a software developer from Arlington who created macovidvaccines.com in early February while on maternity leave, I should note, and software engineer Dan Cahoon, who made the vaccine time bot on Twitter. They both join me now. Olivia and Dan, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Olivia, our pleasure, my pleasure. Starting with you, Olivia, what does macovidvaccines.com do that the state website does not? So MA COVID vaccines will scrape, as we call it, a bunch of websites um, that show you vaccine appointment availability all across the state of Massachusetts. Um, so it'll check every minute, does CVS have any availability? Do any state um, sponsored locations have availability? And it tells you right there in front of your face if there's anything available at the moment. And by the way, I've been to your site many a time. Uh, it's very simple, I should say, which is a compliment either to say, why doesn't the state do what you do? So they did. Um, about a week after I publicized my site and it became uh, pretty well known in the area, uh, the state released their own version of the website called vaxfinder.mass.gov. Um, and it works very similarly. Uh, it's not hooked into as quite as many locations as my website is, though. Mm-hmm. So, Dan, let's move to you, uh, your Twitter bot. Uh, to explain to people how that works. Sure. So I think it actually works pretty similarly to Olivia's site. Um, it, it basically goes on to the Massachusetts websites and it refreshes the page and it looks for appointments. And when it finds a drop of new appointments, then it sends out a tweet alerting people to uh, the new appointments so that they can click on the link and go straight to the site and sign up that way. But I know the state is not doing that. They're not sending out notifications on Twitter or anything else telling you that there's an appointment available at this site. uh, And in fact, you say how many. That's correct, right? That's right. Yeah. So as far as I know, I don't think the state has a notification system. Um, So sort of I I saw that need um, and fulfilled it with a Twitter bot because it's easy. People can sign up and uh, it's pretty easy to just subscribe to tweets. You know, Olivia, I read that you were about to, you were going to meet. I think it was several weeks ago. I'm not sure with some officials from the COVID, whatever it's called, communication center. How did that go? Uh, so they met with me to inform me that they were coming out with their own VaxFinder website. Um, we kind of shared stories about how difficult it was to get information from some of the retail pharmacy locations and things like that. Uh, they said they'd be getting in touch, and I haven't heard since. So. They have not reached out to you as a follow-up? No. I didn't know that. And, Dan, have you heard from anybody in the state COVID infrastructure? Uh, No, I haven't heard from anybody. Uh, Okay. There's a story in today's Globe, which I'm sure you uh, both read, about uh, another set of real people. And I mean that to describe you. And I know, Olivia, you're doing work with them, too. A bunch of volunteers called Mass COVID Vax Help. They help you get an appointment, needless to say. In that story, it says the COVID command center for for the state uh, urges people not to use unauthorized, non-official sources, even though these are the sources that got them appointments Olivia, starting with you, you were an unauthorized, non-official source as well, correct? Yeah, and I think it's easy to know uh, with websites and tools like mine and Dan's that they're reliable because we take you straight to the um, authorized site to sign up for for a vaccine appointment. We don't do it for you. However, the Globe article today did talk about a group of volunteers who are signing up people 
for them on their behalf. And while yeah. we, of course, want to be careful of people scamming other people and, and you know, shady behavior like that, um, I know Diana personally, and we are working very closely together. And I can tell you that um, they are working with the best of intentions to help those who can't navigate the vaccine appointment system themselves, people with unreliable internet that work long hours at their jobs that just can't sit at 8 a.m. on a Thursday and click refresh for four hours to try to get vaccinated. And this is a question of life and death, to be frank. Yeah, and maybe they should say be careful, be cautious about official sources rather than non-official sources. Uh, You know, Dan, back to you for a second. I want to describe my experience this morning, which is not atypical, Mm -hmm. I know. Just before I started my radio show, I went on the state's website to see, went into the waiting room that was much uh, celebrated. When I went on at first, at first there were as a nine minute wait, and then it went to, and this is not atypical, as you know, a 31 minute wait. Then it went down to a one minute wait. My heart started beating faster, I must say. And then all of a sudden, what came up was a page that looked exactly like this one, where it said there's greater than a day wait. And then 10 seconds later, it went down to eight minutes. How is that possible? Uh, I, I'm serious. I don't mean that facetiously. Obviously, that's not possible, correct? So what's happening? Yeah, so I I don't exactly know how they're calculating those numbers, Um, but my best guess is is they're probably taking a stab at estimating based on the number of people looking at the website, how long it is before you can see it. Um, But yeah, I, I think certainly it is a bit frustrating to see numbers fluctuate so wildly and not go down in sort of a, a manner that you would expect. Frustration, uh, the word used is called a euphemism, I believe, is the proper term for what you just described. You know, Olivia, uh, I want to get back to something you said a minute ago. My sense is that there are, there are two pandemics in the state, COVID-19 itself and the refresh pandemic. I, I just don't get this. Uh, Governor Baker was on our radio show a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him why we didn't have a centralized pre-registration site, which would relieve a lot of the frustration and tension. You register, explain what your conditions are, how old you are, whatever, and then the state reaches out to you, either by phone, by email, by text, something like that. Here's what the governor had to say to me. No, we are looking at, uh, we are looking at that. Um, and uh, we'll probably have more to say about it as um, over the course of the next few weeks. We have way more sites, a lot more people. It's a little more complicated to, to set this up in Massachusetts the way you would set it up in a, in a smaller state. And by the way, in fairness to the governor, I mentioned West Virginia, which is a smaller state, but very nearby Virginia, which is a larger state, has a centralized pre-registration system. One, why don't we have it? And two, wouldn't that address the equity issue where most Low-income people, for example, even if they have computer access, don't have all day like I do to keep refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. Yes? Yeah. So I'll answer your second question first, um, which is, yes, it would solve the equity issue, or at least it would certainly take a large step in the right direction uh, because it would allow us to more finely grain, like figure out who we should get vaccinated and prioritize them when we just kind of release everyone 65 and older with two plus comorbidities uh, to the internet, then we get this cutthroat environment like we have right now. And that's just not fair to those who don't have those resources. So that's exactly what Diana and I are trying to do is um, create a system that eventually when supply is no longer the bottleneck will be a fully automated pre-registration system. You put in your information, we let you know when you're eligible, and then you get an appointment booked for you on your behalf, either by a human or by a robot eventually when things settle down. Um, and I think that that's the way that it should have been done. And frankly, it's harder to do it the way we're doing it because we have to hook into a hundred different systems Whereas if there were one centralized state system, then that would cut down a lot of the complexity. So Can why you give me one reason why the, the state place? doesn't do this? We um, don't know. I think that there's, I think that it's just a culture of decentralization all the way from the top. The federal government said the states need to figure it out. The states mm-hmm. said we have a lot to deal with. We'll try to figure some of it out. Health systems, here, take this, you figure it out. CVS, take this and you figure it out. And so what we see... Mm-hmm is, you know, what we have today, which is 100 different places to go to try to sign up for an appointment. 
Okay, last question for both of you, and you have to literally or figuratively raise your right hand to answer this one honestly. <laughs> Starting with you, Dan, when you go home at night and there's not a reporter talking to you or a television camera, what do you say about the state of the vaccina- the state's vaccination rollout system? Um, I, I think certainly that it is a bit frustrating right now. Um, and I'm looking forward to it getting a lot better with some of these things that you've talked about, like the pre-registration system. Very diplomatic. How about you, Olivia? What do you say in the privacy of your own home? <laughs> well, I have two kids running around and, and my husband, so it's not too too private. But um, what I say is I can't believe it's, you know, us regular citizens that are making the most impact right now, that are making the innovations and and pushing these ideas forward. It really should be the state, quite frankly. That's exactly what I say in my house too, and I don't have any of the skills either of you do. Olivia and Dan, it's a pleasure to meet you both, and I know I speak for everybody watching. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you, it was great to have you. Thanks so much for having us on.